Hi, today I'm going to unbox and test the AnyCubic Wash and Cure Station for resin 3D models. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this is now the third video in a new series I'm doing about resin 3D printing. And in this episode, I'm going to unbox this washing and curing station and give it a test to see how effective it is at simplifying the process that occurs after you make your resin 3D print. So before I get started on the unboxing, I want to introduce a new segment called Things I Learned Since My Last Video. And I had a mystery in the last video. I wasn't sure when I was supposed to use the metal spatula and when I should use the plastic. And several of my viewers wrote in very nice comments to explain the difference to me. So the metal one is very useful for removing prints from the build plate. Um, the build plate's metal, you're not going to damage that. And if you've got adequate supports under your model, you won't damage that either. But the plastic spatula is really ideally suited for working inside the liquid resin vat, because the bottom of that vat is a FEP film, which is fragile. And using this to stir the resin before doing a new print, or to stir to see if anything's in the resin that shouldn't be there, this is the spatula you want to use. One other thing I wanted to mention was, in terms of the post-cure on your model, now we're going to be talking a lot about that today, because that's what this is supposed to help me do. But if you're using the sunlight method, I mentioned that I didn't get good sunlight for the couple of days I had between the print and making my video. But I did have several overcast days that had plenty of UV light coming through the clouds that I left it out in a protected place and it was fully cured. Now you can tell it's cured, really the only way to tell if it's cured is by seeing if it's tacky or smooth to the touch. And um, that's kind of a rule of thumb. If it's still tacky, you shouldn't be handling it without gloves. So let's take a look at the AnyCubic washing and curing station. The outside box has the international symbols for don't stack things on top of this, this way up, don't get wet, and it's fragile. It has no branding on it on any side. It just says made in China. So let's open it up and see what we've got. Piece of foam to protect the contents of the top part of the box. I've got the power cord and a power supply. I always like to check and make sure that they are really going to plug into my plug and it will. Some little wrenches and the instructions. So I'm going to stop and read the instructions and then we'll get started again. So this was a little easier for me to get out of the box than my printer was because it had this um, heavy-duty bag that had all the foam in it so I could just slip it up out. And then this was down very tight and very hard to break the suction to get this off. But this then is the cover. And this is yellow. My printer has an orange one. The manual says that this blocks 99.95% of the UV rays, so that's very good. Um, there's a a sensor, well, there's a, a some kind of a sticker here that interacts with a sensor on the back of the machine, and that's a safety uh, feature because neither the washing nor the curing will work if this lid isn't in place because the sensor will know. So let's set this down. So it looks like we have a lot of the washing components here. This is the container that you're going to be washing the model in. It's designed to 
be for you to be able to put this lid on the top and to store it that way so you don't have to take your liquid out your cleaner out every time you do a model put it back and forth so I would note that this is not a UV protecting container um, so if there is uncured resin in it there's a potential I guess for that to cure maybe that cures and falls to the bottom I'm not sure I'll, that's one of the things I'll be learning about this bracket is designed uh, if you had an any cubic printer, uh, you'd be able to use this to hold the build plate itself and you could submerge the whole model and the build plate into the cleaning solution. I don't have an any cubic printer, I have a Creality printer, so I don't know how well this is going to work for me, but I'll be finding that out. This is the way everybody can put their model into the cleaning uh, system through this basket that has a bracket that will hold it at the right height and it does need to be held at the right height because in the bottom of this I think part of what makes it special is that it has this uh, little rotary impeller fan thing in the bottom that's going to set up a little vortex in the cleaning solution and that's why it's effective in cleaning so uh, We'll see how that works in a bit. And the other thing that was in here was this turntable, which is for the UV curing process. And I guess we'll be able to see more about that here when we get this foam off. So Here's where the bracket fits. I'll learn more about this in a minute. This is, there's a hole here that lines up with the, the turntable so that you can put it in and have it spin, but that's not important for this. This sits right on here and it's a magnetic system that runs the little uh, propeller. Now these LED lights, what I read was, I think there's probably 16 of them, and 8 of them are 405 nanometers, which is what my printer has in the base of the printer. And when you get the 405 nanometer resin, like the Elegumars I've been using, it's optimized for that UV wavelength. But there's also 8 of these, probably alternating, I would guess, that are for 365 nanometers so I assume some resin printers must use that wavelength or some resins must use that wavelength but it's got 405 and that's that's what I need so I'm gonna stop at this point and take it into my studio and set it up so of course washing is what we're gonna be doing first um, I did read about the build plate holder there's two different ones you use based on how large your model is if you want to suspend it with the build plate. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that. They said smaller models are best handled in this unless your model is smaller than 18 millimeters, in which case it'll fall through the holes and then you have to do it on the build plate. So, but my model should be fine. Now, one of the reasons why I'm interested in getting the washing and curing station is that it says that you can use different cleaners in it. And because of the propelling motion and the vortex, they can be very effective. And I mentioned in my last video, I want to get away from isopropyl alcohol if I can, because uh, it, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, and it's very hard to come by. And it's also, I think, the fumes are very strong, and I, I have to wear a high quality uh, mask to block the fumes and I'd rather avoid that if I can. So I did some research on the internet. I've heard about using Simple Green. I've used Simple Green a lot for cleaning paper off of laser cut items. I'm very familiar with it but I also know I really don't like the way it smells. So I'm going to try something new today and it's called Yellow Magic 7 and what this is is a cleaner that's been approved for use on machines that come in contact with things that are used with food. So it cleans 
inks and uh, other things off of printers that print food bags for bread and such. It's supposed to be low VOC and it's supposed to be very effective. So I'm going to give it a try and it's actually uh, readily available on Amazon. Of course, I want to test everything before I put my model in it because I haven't even turned it on yet, so I don't, I don't know that it even works. So let's look at how the basket fits. It, um, it slides into this bracket very easily, and it, the bottom of the basket is just above the blade. And then let's put the top on because we know it won't work without the top. And let's push on. Now, it said in the manual the default mode for this is going to be cure. There's two modes over here, wash and cure. And yes, cure is lit up. So if I touch that once, it's on wash now. And there's a start and a stop and a time. So it's on two minutes right now. It's two minutes, four minutes, and six minutes. And I'm just going to push start, see what happens. So the magnets spin the blade. And the blade really does create a nice vortex in the cleaning fluid. Now I've only filled this up about halfway because my model's quite small and I think that will be plenty for doing what I want to do. Now what I also read is that whatever time you pick it's going to stop halfway through that time and reverse the direction of the blade. And the reason they do that is because it will turn the vortex the other direction and it will hopefully clean out the uncured resin that's clinging into the details and folds of your model. So it's winding down and now it's going back the other direction and it should do that for a minute and then it should be finished. So I'm going to get my 3D model I printed this morning off my printer. I'm going to put it on six minutes, still on wash, and I'm going to say start. Wow, and the model is actually sucked up into that vortex. It's a miniature, it's a standard size miniature, so hopefully that doesn't cause any problems with the model. So because this is approved for um, contact with food related items, it's supposed to be safe to do that kind of rinsing, but you would not take this and just dump it down. The, the, drain, that would not be a good idea. So I'm going to have to figure out what the correct disposal process is for that. But this looks quite good. Um, I'm going to stop and take the supports off of it and see what I think after they're removed to see if it got into all the little nooks and crannies. If you do any close work, you might have a pair of these around. I have them because I paint miniatures. And I find it's really useful to use them when I'm removing supports because I don't want to clip off something unintentionally. And you don't want to accidentally damage your model. So after getting all the supports off, there are still a few places that are shiny that I'm not convinced it's clean in, so I'm going to put it back in 
for another six minutes, and I don't mind doing that because this is pretty easy, and uh, it's certainly very little to no fumes from the cleaner, and if it works, I'm going to be very satisfied with that. So after a second run through, uh, it looks quite good. It's all matte. I think it's clean and ready to go on to the next step. I've just hung the basket over the side of my utility sink on the inside so it can drip. Uh, once again, there's not enough cleaner on that to be hazardous. And I'll seal this and set it aside. Once again, I'm going to test this before I actually put my model in it. I put the little acrylic turntable on, and now I have to turn the mode to cure. It's on two minutes, and I'll just say go. And it's turning. Now, when I put that turntable on, there's two screws in the top that you're supposed to line up with the two uh, grooves in the hole. And I lined it up and I pushed it down. It didn't go very far down. I felt like it should have gone in further, but that's as far as it went and it seems to be working. So hopefully I've done that correctly. So let me just try stop. And let's Put the model in the middle. Put the top back on. And once again, I'm going to take a conservative approach to this. I'm going to say six minutes and start. I thought I'd run a little test here about our safety system. There it goes. As soon as you lift it up enough for that sticker to pass away from the sensor, it stops. But then it's smart enough to pick right up where it left off when you put the top back on. The machine just shut down. Um, while I was waiting, I peeled the plastic off the front here because I'm pretty sure this is a keeper. So I love to do that part. And I'm going to take the top off. Got my gloves off because theoretically this is cured and um, definitely is not tacky um, but I still see a few places where it's a little shinier than I would like it to be um, on the parts that slope away from the light like her back I can see some shiny bits so I think I'm going to put her back in and run it another six minutes. But to me, that is uh, so much easier than putting it outside and keeping an eye on it and making sure nothing happens to it while it sits out there. So I'll run it one more time. So after another six minutes, I've pulled it out. Um, it feels great. Uh, certainly no tackiness and even the places where I thought it looked a little shiny it is a little shiny but it's not at all sticky uh, not tacky so I think it's fine I think it did a really good job so I I'm very pleased with the yellow magic 7 it's much less smelly and it's non-toxic than uh, compared to simple green and certainly compared to isopropyl alcohol uh, it did a good job in combination with this machine getting this clean. Um, the parts that are sticking out on the model, like the scabbard and the instrument and her arms and everything, the bouncing around in the basket that I could hear didn't uh, do any damage. So I think this is really a good addition to my 3D printing experience. I have many other 3D printing videos planned. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.